Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Day before I'm going back to Spain, so I'm here in Malta where I have most of my rackets. As you know, I have a lot of rackets, so today I wanted to look at some uh, cool models that I have in my collection. I've shown the pro stocks before, the Mare, the Djokovic, Haas and so on, but obviously it's fun to talk about some other interesting frames as well. And I want to hear from you, if you collect rackets, uh, what do you have in your collection? What is your most treasured piece? And uh, do you play with all of them or do you just keep them on the wall or in a wardrobe like I do? Uh, sometimes there's a storage space. I know a bunch of guys uh, that have like 700 rackets, 800 rackets. I may be up to around 100, so I'm not really a collector. It's more been like my search for that uh, perfect racket, which is uh, I found out many years later was not so smart but just like trying everything over the years, just enjoying trying everything. And then obviously test rackets, demo rackets, trades I've been doing on different forums. Yeah, it's been a long process of testing everything. And the collection keeps changing as I'm sure it does for, for some of you as well. Like you use sell and trade and buy and things keep moving all the time. So let's have a look at, at some of them. Let me know which one you prefer or one you would have or already have perhaps. Let's start with this Tommy Haas personal frame. Uh, I don't know if I showed that in a previous video, but it's blacked out. He was testing a few different specifications of his PT57A 1820 pattern. It says Haas here on the frame and it's a 360 for each swing weight, very, very heavy. And, uh, but yeah, it's a great racket. You know, the PT57A is, is, um, is a classic racket, beautiful pocketing and great feel, but it's obviously not very forgiving. And uh, I have a few PT57A. I wanted to play with them because I like to hit with them so much, but I don't get enough on the ball when I play with good players. So uh, I can't really play with them competitively, but I really enjoy playing with them and they stay in my so-called collection. Here is uh, another one. So these are very similar. They play the same. This one is spec to my specifications. So it's a bit lighter, more like a 6195 in specifications. More weight at 3 and 9 uh, instead of at 12, which most pros seem to prefer. And um, yeah, I have three of these beauties. It's the UTEC Prestige design of the Pizza 57A. So those two out of the way. It's going to be a lot of head because I have a lot of head rackets. I always liked the feeling and precision of head rackets. I do like a lot of Wilsons and some old Babolats as well, but yeah, a lot of them are, are heads for this video. We can look at other brands uh, coming up in the future as well. And this one, it's a Radical Touch Pro. I don't think this was uh, the best selling line from Head. Uh, not sure, but that's what I've heard. Uh, although I think there are some pros who use this mold. But yeah, I have a Mari autograph on it, so that's why I enjoy this one and we'll keep it in the plastic but it's uh, supposed to be a, a pretty nice playing frame. I thought these were pretty firm, if I remember correctly. So I'm just going to leave it in the plastic. Here's another beauty from the collection. This is a Boris Becker in plastic as well. World Champion Limited Edition racket from Boris Becker. This is 3,061 out of 3,100 rackets from 1995. Haven't opened it, still has the plastic. And uh, it's supposed to play almost like a prestige classic. Uh, but I, I have not... Uh, had the heart to to try it yet but maybe one day i will and quite a different uh, throat design here quite quite different i must say uh, so if you've played with this one let me know what you think about it in the comments and one of the biggest regrets i have is selling the wilson clash when they had this uh, kind of car dazzle design when they launched the clash they had a prototype i don't know why i sold that that played great it's just a stupid move so i'm trying now to hold on to these kind of pre-commercial um, paint jobs, cosmetics is a better word for it. Uh, usually racket designers don't like when I say paint job. Paint job is, it sounds a bit sloppy, so let's use cosmetic. Uh, but this is a blacked out. It has the, you got this, this is the boom release. And and this one I will I will hold on to because it's a very uh, nice playing frame. It's quite soft. I mean, it's, it's a little bit erratic in the string bed for my liking. Uh, if it was like an 1820, I think it would be even better. But overall, uh, a, a nice frame that I enjoy to play with. Requires a little bit of customization. As you can see in the hoop, I added some, some weight uh, for, for this one. And I think most playtesters agreed with me that it needed some weight. And I have another head here. It's the Radical. They had this launch thing where they uh, designed and put the name on the frame. So it says Jonas here, which is pretty cool. So I'm definitely holding on to that one. Uh, nice playing frame. I did, the copy I got was a little bit head heavy. Otherwise it's something you could easily play with because the Radical Pro is a nice racket. 
and before it was uh, released, it looked more like this, so the, the, the silvery. I think this was a better cosmetic. I think most people uh, agreed that this is better looking than the more orangey. And uh, but it did not suit the the other silos in terms of, of the design that they try to to do. Obviously, you want the, all the silos to have a similar scheme of of design. So I think that was the idea. But I think this one was the crowd favorite, and this is the MP version. The racket I started with, I've done a 6195 review. This is the 1820. They also have uh, 1618, uh, which I think is even better, perhaps. It's a bit more lift on the ball. Yeah, one of the best rackets, one of the best cosmetics of all time. And uh, I, I still like playing with it, although it is punishing. So I don't play my best tennis anymore uh, with this. But, but it's something that's it's just a classic racket, just a very, very good racket. And you should try it uh, because I think these are quite, you can get, come buy them relatively cheap. People are now stopping to play with these, although they are extremely good. And this bad boy, the Sampras uh, KPS, you call it. It's the Pro Staff, K Factor Pro Staff 88. Uh, rumor has it that the rackets that came out of St. Vincent that belonged to Pete Sampras were more like 88 square inches uh, due to the process. And the factory and the tolerance is there. So they had uh, what I think was a thicker uh, beam and a slightly bigger head. So, uh, And then obviously he had so much weight to the sides here to get it up to close to 400 grams strong, which was insane, really. And then later on, he realized he should have probably played with a, with a lighter frame or changed his frame to something more more doable. But this, this racket is a, is a beauty just to look at. And uh, it's not really feasible to play with it, I would say, uh, at least if you want to play more modern tennis. But it, but it plays nicely. Huge plow through, uh, very good on, on volleys and, uh, and serves. And I, I did review this one, actually very nice to hit with, is the Vacuum Pro 90 from Fischer. Uh, made famous by Michael Stich when he won Wimbledon. And I have not played, I think, with a racket with a more buttery sweet spot on this one but obviously you see how, how narrow this racket is it's it's quite slim and it's not that easy to to hit it but when you get to the net it's beautiful uh, to play with so uh, and it's also a very nice looking design i must say the cosmetic is is very uh, attractive of this vacuum pro 90. this one you see from time to time the aeropro drive original the one that rafa uses under the cosmetic uh, these days and he's been using it all of his career since they Put him on this from the pure drive so he was first soft drive which i have as well and there's videos about the soft drive on my channel and then there was the pure drive for a bit and then moved over to the aero pro, pro drive which is made for his game in many ways with this massive spin but this one has a little bit of a denser pattern uh, than uh, the rackets that came afterwards uh, so that's probably why he likes it. it has very raw feel and from what I've heard he likes it to be strung a few times to reduce some of the stiffness of the frame and the more you string a racket the, the more the, the kind of fibers break down and the softer it gets and this is a pretty stiff frame so uh, stringing it a few times uh, for him makes it that kind of sweet spot that he likes when he plays. And this one, of course, uh, the Lacoste LT12 that I showed in a, t in a previous video, I actually played with this one, it's, <laughs> it's a wooden wooden racket something like a, a wooden modern racket obviously with a thicker beam and it's a work of art really in a way and and should perhaps not be played with but it was actually quite nice to to hit with it was possible to actually play with this frame strung with lynx touch and i did hit with it a hit with it a bit when i was at kendelbach and it's it's quite easy to uh, to bruise it a bit i think it got a little bit of a ding from the stringing machine because the the, the wood is so soft so beautiful racket cosmetically and visually so it's this one that'll keep or hang it on the wall perhaps those were some rackets from the collection just wanted to um, do a little bit of, of a video of that, about that before i go to marbella for a while and there will other there will be other types of content uh, than from this racket room in malta uh, do you collect rackets? Let me know in the comments and maybe have some interesting things to share. I don't really collect, as I said, I'm keeping maybe 10 to 15 at a time that I'm happy with or that has a special uh, like place in my tennis racket career. Um, or, you know, for example, Novak's frame and Myers frame, I'm not going to get rid of those. But uh, if you have anything special or nice you want to share, do that in the comments below. This is for you racket nerds, collectors, uh, even if you only have 10 rackets, which is still a lot, you probably still have a theme in your collection of rackets you want or you like specifically. So maybe it's a specific brand, maybe it's a specific age of tennis. 
I have some other oldies as well. A lot of them I've showed in previous videos. So check through the YouTube archive for more racket stuff. All right, that's about it for now. It's time to get packing. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.